Let's try that again. In the 1960s, many young people adopted values that ran counter to the mainstream. These people, these young people, were often considered to be members of the counterculture. So again, they're going against the typical culture of the 1950s. This counterculture was expressed in a variety of ways through the way that they dressed, the music that they listened to, the drugs that they took, and their decision to live communally. The hippies had a dress code. So again, the hippies had a dress code and they were called flower children. They had long hair, long beards, wore jeans and beads. And this group came together most famously in the summer of love in 1967. So again, the summer of love was 1967. In the summer of love, young drifters, dropouts, and runaways populated the streets of the country's major cities. They used a lot of illegal drugs, including marijuana, which became very popular with the youth of the 1960s. They also started using a drug called LSD. <laughs> which they were told would free their minds. However, a side effect of this was a lot of drug addiction and overdosing. Which was very common during this era. Uh, this would also be a time very short lived and would meet its end in the 1970s. Another aspect that meant a lot of change was music. Music of the 1960s inspired the era and reflected on the era. In the genre of folk music, you have Bob Dylan and Joan Baez. Baez's last name is spelled B-A-E-Z. Let 
their music gave a voice to the younger generation. You also see the growth of rock and roll. With artists like the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Jimi Hendrix, and Janis Joplin. And in 1969, we have the most famous music festival of this era, Woodstock. At the Woodstock Music Festival in upstate New York, we see the peak of counterculture. In that, in, in August, Hundreds of thousands of people gathered together and fellowshiped around music. And because there were so many people, the police decided we'll just leave them alone because it would have been impossible to arrest everybody there partaking in illegal drugs. And the festival remained peaceful and stayed under control despite the large crowds. And this division over music and attitude continued to divide this younger generation from their elders. Something else inspired by counterculture was the sexual revolution. The 1960s saw a drastic change of Americans' attitudes towards sexual expression. This challenge began in the 1950s by the research of Alfred Kinsey. In, in the 1950s, Alfred Kinsey, who was a research scientist, conducted research on everything that was considered a sexual taboo at that time, whether it be premarital sex, homosexuality, and marital infidelity. These were all considered taboo subjects, but through Kinsey's research, Americans realized how common these things really were. There was also an increase in medicine that allowed for the sexual revolution. There are more antibiotics for venereal diseases. And the birth control pill is officially introduced to the public in 1960. This type of medication contributed to these changing attitudes. We also start to see 
overtly sexual themes arrive in advertisements, magazines, and movies. And sex becomes just another consumer product. This foundation of the sexual revolution allows for a lot of different liberation movements to continue through the 1960s. And first, we're going to look at the LGBTQ plus rights movement. This had been going on for a while. In 1950, we see the foundation of the Mattachine Society. Mattachine is spelled M-A-T-T-A-C-H-I-N-E. It's also on your slide. It was founded in 1950 with the goal to protect and improve the rights of gay men. Members of the Mattachine Society were also careful and adopted what they consider to be respectable dress and behavior that they knew straight society demanded from them. And they used non-confrontational methods. While the work of the Mattachine Society is super important, it was very targeted towards straight passing white men. And a vast majority of gay men, lesbians, and trans transgender people to remain in the closet, forced to hide away from American society. But inspired by the civil rights movement, the LGBTQ community began to demand their rights more forcefully. The defining moment of this era of the LGBTQ movement is Stonewall. In 1969, the Stonewall Inn in New York City was raided by the police. Stonewall was a safe space for the most marginalized of the LGBTQ community, including trans women of, col of color specifically. But this time when Stonewall was raided, they decided to fight back, which led to a two day riot. And this is often considered a turning point for LGBTQ uh, visibility in this era. In fact, the first pride was held on the one year anniversary of Stonewall. Another group inspired by the sexual revolution is the women's movement. The increased education and employment of women in the 1950s 
the civil rights movement and the sexual revolution all contributed to a new feminist movement of the 1950s, 60s, sorry. Many consider the true spark to the women's movement to be the publishing of Betty Friedan's book, The Feminine Mystique. The Feminine Mystique was published in 1963 and discussed the lack of fulfillment that women felt as housewives and as mothers. This pushed them to continue their education and find careers that they found satisfying. In 1966, Betty Friedan helped found NOW, NOW stands for National Organization for Women, which utilized similar tactics to the civil rights movement, but for women's equality. The main goal of NOW was to ensure that women would receive equality, especially in terms of the workplace. By this time, there had already been steps towards this. The Equal Pay Act was passed in 1963, and the Civil Rights Act was passed in 1964. And while these laws were supposed to ensure workplace equality, they weren't really enforced. The most important thing about the women's movement of this era, though, is that they normalized women leaving the home and entering the workplace, especially professions dominated, dominated by men, including business, law, medicine, and politics. We're gonna transition from looking at these equality movements of the 1960s to looking at the way that Vietnam, Vietnam impacted American society. As the United States increased its involvement with the Vietnam War, the anti-war movement also increased. There was a major credibility gap. And the credibility gap refers to the misinformation from military leaders in the White House to general American citizens. Up 
Another major difference between Vietnam War and other military conflicts, this is the first war that is televised. So this is the first war where people are seeing footage of the destruction and death on their TV screens every single day. From this debate comes two groups, the hawks and the doves. The hawks refer to the supporters of the war. And the doves refer to those who demanded peace. Hawks also believed that this war was between the Soviet Union and the United States. So they believe that the Soviets are backing North Vietnam. And so they have to defend Vietnam from these communists. And the doves believe that it was a civil war that the United States did not have a purpose in being in. You can go. Something that led to most of the, a bunch of the anti-war conflict during Vietnam was the Selective Service Act. The Selective Service Act was passed in 1951 and it drafted young men between the ages of 18 to 26 into the armed forces. I'm sorry, that was supposed to be 1961, I believe. Let me double check. Okay, it was 1951, I apologize. And this was just something that you had to do. If you were drafted, you wouldn't necessarily go into the military, but you had to be available in case of a military conflict. But this became a highly debated topic as the United States was further became further involved with Vietnam. And in the 1960s, we start to see a rise in conscientious objectors. And conscientious objectors are people who opposed going to the war for moral or religious reasons. One of the most famous of this era is Muhammad Ali. Who refused to go to Vietnam and was even jailed in 1966. Ali's decision inspired MLK to take a pacifist approach to Vietnam as well. Okay. 
there were ways to avoid being drafted like deferment. If you were a college student, you could defer, so deferment, your draft and say, I'm in college, I cannot go to war. But even this was eliminated in 1971. And many use this practice of deferment as an example that the rich were prioritized in this military effort than the poor. Because if you are a wealthy college student, you get to avoid going to war, as opposed if you are, if you are poor or a blue collar worker who cannot do that. In the 1960s, we also see an increase in student movements towards peace. In the 1960s, we see a lot of liberal minded young college students begin to side with peace and support things like the civil rights movement. The most famous group of these students is the SDS, which stands for the Students for a Democratic Society. In 1962, they published the Port Huron Statement. Again, Port Huron Statement is spelled on your slide. And the Port Huron Statement demanded several things. The first, they call for an end to nuclear power. Second, they wanted university decisions to be made with students' voices involved. And third, they wanted a reform of the Democratic Party. With this statement, we also see the development of the new left. And the new left refers to activists and intellectuals who supported the ideas of the Port Huron Statement. And in 1964, the SDS has its most famous protest in Berkeley, California. And in this protest, students demanded
the university end restricting their political activities. Last slide. All of these movements unfortunately meet a very tragic and violent end in the United States as the 1960s come to us come to a close. By the late 1960s, the Vietnam War was costing a lot of lives and a lot of money. All of the great society programs we discussed yesterday had their budgets cut so they could defer money into the war effort. And groups of students and protesters began to march in cities like San Francisco and New York City demanding an end to the war and an end to nuclear uh, weapons. When Richard Nixon is elected in 1969, he begins to slowly remove Americans from Vietnam but it still takes a while. And on May 4th, 1970, at Kent, at Kent State University in Ohio, a group of na National Guardsmen opened fire on unarmed protesters which killed four and wounded 11. Two weeks later at Jackson State College in Mississippi, National Guardsmen entered a student dorm and killed two black students. And so with the 1960s closing, we see a greater increase of violence towards protesters and even further division amongst the Vietnam War, about the Vietnam War. That is our lecture for today. Go ahead and transition to your exit ticket. This exit ticket will be graded, so please make sure that you are um, Fully, fully answering the question number four with two to three complete sentences. Please chat me if you have any questions about the lecture. Once I see a submission for your exit ticket, you will be free to go.
Make sure for number three, you're reading it carefully. They advocated for all of the following except. Also, please remember to turn in on Google Classroom before you leave. Once I see that you've turned in on Google Classroom and turn in an exit ticket, you are free to go. Uh, Mahmoud, you are good to go. Thank you, Shakim. You are good to go. Thank you, Giovanni. You're free to go. Thank you, Heaven. Thank you, Kayla. You guys are both free to go. Great job today. Thank you, Jalasia. You're free to go. It is 8.50, try to finish up in the next couple of minutes. Let's see, sorry, I'm just gonna... Uh, sorry, Skyann, I just saw your chat. I do not see it. Um, Skyann, I know that you need to get to your next class. If you need to come back to this and do a new exit ticket later in the day, that's totally fine. It's not due technically until six o'clock. If that's okay with you. Okay, thanks, Skyan. And if you have any issues with it, please just let me know. If you need to like open it up in an email and like send me an email with your answers, if it does it again, you can do that as well. Thank you, Ashley. I have yours. Okay, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end the Zoom call. Please let me know if.